Today on our 2014 Ford van, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the T1 vehicle wiring harness to a four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118551. So here's what our wiring looks like when it's fully installed. Now it is going to live on the outside of the vehicle and it's going to provide us with a four pole flat for our trailer, giving us all the required lights to get down the road, such as our turn signals, brake lights, and clearance lights. Now as far as the installation goes, it's going to be pretty straightforward. There's going to be a few connections behind the taillights we're going to have to make, and then we're going to have to run a line of wire up to the battery. Now that we've seen what it looks like when we're done, let's show you how we get it installed. To begin our installation, we're going to need to remove our taillights, and we're going to have four fasteners holding them in place. I'm going to be using a T15 Torx bit to remove those. Once we have all the bolts removed, we can grab the tail light and we can gently pull it out. If we just push in on that tab, it should release the connector. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. Now with this tail light removed, we're going to go ahead and do that on the other side too. So we're going to want to go ahead and grab our wiring harness and we're going to start with a green wire on the passenger side. Now you'll notice that our T connector here looks very similar to the one that's on our vehicle. Now we're going to want to plug in the male to the female on the vehicle end. And lock it into place. Now if we look down into our headlight area, there's going to be a hole right here that's actually going to be access to the inside of the vehicle. Now if we move to the inside of the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and get into our jack storage compartment right here. So we can go ahead and open up this compartment. I'm going to set this panel aside. So right behind our jack, just to the back of the vehicle, this is where that hole going out to the tail light is going to be. So I'm going to reach in from the outside and feed my yellow wire and my four pole wire through this hole. Just want to feed in a little bit and we can go back in and grab it. So we can start pulling all the excess through and then pull our four pole wire as well. For right now, we're going to leave our four pole wire right here and we're going to start to route our yellow wire over to the driver's side. Now over here on the driver's side, this plastic panel can actually go right underneath it and that's going to give us the same opening to the outside tail light there. So I'm just going to push my connectors underneath that panel there and start feeding my wire through until I can reach it from the outside. Just going to reach in the same hole that we did on the other side and we can pull out our connector. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing and plug in our female end into the male end on the vehicle. Making sure it locks into place. We're going to go ahead and leave this loose for right now. Now to conceal our wire going across the threshold here, we can either remove these push pin fasteners along the edge or if we can, we're just going to lift up slightly on the edge of it and tuck the wire underneath the plastic. We're just going to keep working our way across until the entire wire is nice and concealed. And around the edge here, you just want to make sure you get it underneath that weather stripping as well so you can't see it on the edge. Now back on the outside and our passenger side of the vehicle, we should still have a black wire with the bare end and a white wire with a ring terminal. Now our white wire is going to act as our ground, so we're going to need to secure this to a good grounding point. So I'm going to take the provided self-tapping screw in that's in our kit and I'm going to secure it right to the sheet metal here. Now I just want to mention you always want to double check what's behind what you're screwing into because you don't want to damage any wires or pierce anything else. So I'm going to be using a quarter inch nut driver to secure it into the sheet metal. Now the black wire here, it's going to need to be ran up to the battery, which is going to provide power to our module box. Now they do provide us with a pretty good length of wire, so we're going to need to strip back one end and connect it to this wire here. So now that we have the end stripped, take one of the provided buck connectors in our kit, insert the wire into one end, and we can crimp it down.
Then we can take the other end of the wire we just stripped back and insert it to the other end of the buck connector and crimp it in place. Now these buck connectors are heat shrink, so I'm going to be using a heat gun to shrink them down. But I do want to mention if you're using an open flame such as a lighter or a torch, you want to be extremely careful not to burn or char the connector or the wire itself. We're going to want to take the free end of that black wire we just connected, and we're going to route it in just where we had our four pole wire as well. I'm going to pull all the slack out, make sure that it didn't get caught. It's never a bad idea to peek on the outside and make sure that it's all coming through. Now we're going to need to find a spot to mount our converter box here. Now we do have a couple different options. There's a tab right here that we can either screw into the panel, we can zip tie it to something, or we can use the provided double sided tape. In our application we're going to be using the tape. So I took some alcohol and a paper towel, and I'm just going to rub the inside of where I'm going to mount the box so it's nice and clean. And right inside the tail light area, just towards the center, would be a good spot because we know it's going to be out of the way, but there's still plenty of room. So we can take our double sided tape, we're going to take one end of the backing off, I'm going to apply it directly to the module. I want to push pretty firmly to make sure that glue sticks nice and good. Then we can peel off the other backing. And once we get it into where we want it, give it a nice little push to make sure it adheres. On the inside of the vehicle, we should have our black charge wire and our four pole wire. Now we're going to get both of these to the outside of the vehicle. So if we lift up the carpet right here by our jack, we're going to find a grommet right here just towards the inside of the jack there. So we can actually pull out the grommet and we'll start with our four pole wire. Now I do want to mention this is going to be an extremely tight fit, but it will fit. And once we have it through, we'll drop the rest of it down. Then we can take our black wire and feed that down as well. Now with the grommet here, because we're not going to be able to put it back with the wires in place, I'm actually going to cut a slit so that I can have my wires in the center of it and we can still put the grommet back. We can slide our wires to the inside then we can push our grommet back into place. And just to help to seal everything up, I'm going to take a little bit of silicone and put it around the cut and fill up that hole so it doesn't leak. Now if you need some silicone, you can pick some up on our website using part number LT37467. I'm just going to fill up the hole and then I have a little slice that I made in there. With all of our connections made inside, we can go and put the panel back in place. We can go ahead and plug our taillights back in and secure them down. Making sure everything locks in place. And tuck the excess wires into the socket. And then we can start replacing our hardware. Now that we have this one in, we can put the other taillight in as well. Now our four pole wire, I'm going to take and I'm actually going to go over the frame here. And I'm going to route it towards the center of my hitch. I'm just going to attach it to the hitch using the dust cover for now, and we'll come back and tie up the wires later. Now, as I mentioned before, we are going to have to run this black wire up to the battery. Now, everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. I just want to mention you want to stay away from any moving parts like suspension or any heat sources like the exhaust. So, I'm going to go ahead and run this, and when I get done, I'll show you how I routed my wire. So, my charge wire came down right here. And I put a zip tie to my four pole and I ran it across to the driver's side. And I actually ran it over my spare tire cover. Went over this cross member. And then I came down 
right by the fuel tank here. I put it behind this cover underneath, following it down. Zip tie it to some few lines here, went behind the heat shield, and then right now I just have it sitting here. Now we need to move up to the top, and I'll show you how we're going to get our wire up to our battery. Now in order to get the wire up, I'm going to take a piece of airline tube that I had laying around, and you can use whatever you have available, even if it's just a coat hanger, something that's just going to keep its shape when you start pushing through. So I'm going to feed my airline tube down through the engine bay until I can meet up with that wire down below. So here's where my airline tube dropped down. So I'm going to take the end of my wire here. I'm actually going to put it into my airline tube just a bit. I'm going to take a little bit of electrical tape and secure it so when I start pulling it doesn't fall out. Now we can go back up top and pull our wire through. Now you're going to want to pull all the excess wire up and it's never a bad idea to go underneath and make sure that it's not getting snagged on anything. So we can go ahead and pull our wire out. I'm actually going to take a zip tie and tie my wire right here. That way I don't have to worry about it falling down or rattling around when we're driving. Now the battery is on the other side of the engine bay, but fortunately right here on the very outside front of the driver's side of the engine bay, we have our fuse panel. So if we come to these two clips, we can release them, open up the cover, and we'll have a 12 volt power source right here. Now before we hook up our wire, we're gonna to need to put our fuse holder in place because it is a fuse protected circuit. Now it's one big loop, so I'm just gonna cut this directly in half, and we're gonna strip back both ends. Now on one end, we're going to put on the provided ring terminal, and the other end, we're going to put on another buck connector. Slide the ring terminal in place and crimp it down. The other end, we take one of our heat shrink buck connectors and crimp it in place. Now we can take the end of our black wire strip it back, and it's going to be going into that buck connector. Now we're going to, need to remove that nut in order to get our ring terminal in place. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter socket to remove it. Nut removed, we can slide the ring terminal in place and then retighten that nut. I'm going to take some of the provided zip ties that come in our kit and I'm actually just going to tie it to some of these wires right below my fuse box so I don't have any loose wires in my engine bay. Finally, we can take the 15 amp fuse that comes in our kit, put it in the fuse holder. Now that all our connections are made, now would be the time to go ahead and clean up all your wires because we know where everything needs to go and we can just tidy up all the excess. Now that our installation is complete, we can go ahead and check and make sure that our circuits are working by plugging in our tester. Now if you need one of these 4 pole testers, you can pick one up on our website using part number I26. Now I'm going to grab an extra set of hands so that I can verify that all the lights are working properly. Can I get the headlights please? Looks good. Left turn signal, good. Right turn signal, good. Now the brakes, and finally the brakes and both turn signals, please. With everything looking good, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll finish up our look at the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118551 on our 2014 Ford van. Thanks for watching and click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.